What's up everyone, Clark Glassford, founder of My Practice Interview, where I help you land your dream job. And today I wanna to talk to you about those rare occasions where you've received a job offer, yay, you've made it all the way through the entire interview process, navigated every step, but there's that niggling feeling in your stomach that maybe I need to decline this offer. Ugh, what a place to be in where you've made it through all the steps and now you've received an offer, but there's just something that isn't sitting quite right and you're thinking, do I accept this or not? And I've got 10 steps here that I wanna walk you through of things that you should be thinking about in terms of whether you accept that job offer or simply decline it. So let's go through those 10 steps right now and things that I want you to think about because if you're having that niggling feeling in the back of your mind, it's probably hitting one or multiple points on these 10 things that I'm gonna talk about here. So let's talk about the first one. Number one, salary doesn't meet your expectations. Okay, you've done your job market reviews, you know your value, you've done your own budget in terms of what you need to make to make this step in your career and the offer they present back to you it just isn't good enough. It's not meeting the numbers that you came to expect in terms of wanting to accept this role. So if you find yourself in that position and you can't counter offer, you can't renegotiate, they're not willing to budge off the numbers they presented, it may be a point where you need to be respectful and decline the offer based on that alone. Now, great news is in the description below, there is a link to my playlist on how to negotiate job offers how to do counter offers, when you've been lowballed in a job offer, what you do and what you say. So there's a whole bunch of videos there. I want you to check those out if you're finding yourself in this spot because just because they give you a low offer doesn't necessarily mean that that's the end state and you should walk away. Make sure you're exploring every option before you walk away. But if salary is below your expectations and they can't come up to your expectations, it may be that time where you need to decline and walk away. Number two, benefits. You get the job offer, maybe the salary is okay, but when you start digging into the benefits, they're not great. The medical, the dental, the vacation time, all the little perks that come with that particular industry or job that you expect in those types of roles just aren't there. You need to really think about those. So money's one thing, make sure you do your research on benefits. Make sure you really understand what it is that that employer is offering you because if it isn't meeting your expectations and you don't actually spend the time thinking about it, you accept a role, you start that role, and then you look at and go, uh-oh, what did I accept here? This isn't what I wanted. And now you're trapped in that role and having to think about making a move far too soon from where you expected to be in, in, in that specific job. So really dig into those benefits, be clear as to what your benefits are and what your breaking point is in terms of what an employer should be offering you. If it's not meeting those expectations, guess what? You may need to walk away and decline that offer. Number three, you've got nowhere to go. What do I mean by that? Well, you've asked questions in the interview. Now remember, if you've watched my videos before, interviews are a two-way conversation. You are asking the employer questions just as they're asking you questions. And perhaps you've learned that the role you're stepping into really doesn't have any opportunity for advancement. There's no real place to go. You've kind of hit your ceiling. You can't move. For some people, that's great. They want the role. They want to be in that role. That's where they see themselves. No problem. But if you're looking for advancement opportunities or room to grow and that employer doesn't offer that, then again, another sign that it might be important for you to decline that offer and look for another opportunity. Number four, bad fit, bad culture. So you may explore throughout the interview process just what that organization's culture is all about. Through your own research, perhaps you've looked out into LinkedIn, you've followed my videos about doing some research on LinkedIn, connecting with employees, and you learned some things about the company that just don't seem to fit your own values. They don't seem to fit the type of culture that you're looking for. Perhaps in that interview process where you've asked really key questions about the organization, about the role, about the industry, the responses you've gotten really aren't getting excited. It's not the type of culture you feel you can work for and isn't a good fit. This is important. Don't try and force it. Don't try and force yourself into a culture and a fit that isn't going to work with you and your values. If you're finding that it's not a good fit, it's not a culture that you're looking for, again, opportunity to walk away and respectfully decline that offer. Number five, flexibility, okay? We're in a whole new world of flexibility. Work-life balance is so important for employees. 
you need to make sure you are clear in your mind as to what flexibility in work you are willing to accept. Is it remote work? Is it hybrid work? Is it flexible work schedules where you can kind of pick and choose the hours you want to work? If an employer is really rigid on their hours and you have to work between certain shift schedule and that's not going to work for you for work-life balance, again, time to step away, decline that offer. So be clear in terms of asking questions in that interview process once you get to the offer stage as to what the schedule is like, what flexibility exists. If it's not meeting what you're looking for, again, look to decline that offer. Number six on this list is your boss sucks. Yep. Get, you got that right. You're not always compatible with everybody. That's just life in general. Perhaps in that interview process, you've been interviewed by multiple people. One of those persons is your potential future boss and you're just not getting a good feeling that you're actually compatible working with that individual. You don't have a connection with them. Uh, you just get a, a strange sense about who they are, what they're all about. And you think, you know, this could be someone that I could be in trouble if I work with. It, this is not something you should try and force. So if you haven't been able to establish a connection with that boss or you have that uneasy feeling about them, again, do that gut check. Think about whether this person could be somebody you can work with or not. And if it's the no side, then maybe time to walk away from the offer. Okay. Number seven, the employer is unreliable or disrespectful. Well, how'd you get to understanding that? Typically, your introduction to that employer is through the recruitment process. That is your first impression of them. So if they're canceling interviews, if they're late for meetings with you, if they just look disorganized and running kind of shoddy interview processes, that may be a really good sign that this really is an employer that I want to work for. So keep your eyes and ears open as you go through the process for those things because they are key for you to understand the type of employer you're working for, the, your future in that organization. So really important there. Number eight, the commute, a killer commute. I've seen this with clients over and over and over again. They get an offer, it's the money they want, they're super excited about the organization, but guess what? They've got a three hour commute daily to get to that office and they convince themselves. They say, yes, I can do this commute, no problem. I can do this every single day. And within a month or two, they're going, I have made a huge mistake. Do not underestimate commutes. Now I get it. Some of us out there, we live in areas where no matter where we're working, we're going to have to commute and that's just part of it. And we've got to deal with that. But if you have options and a commute is something that you can avoid, think about that because guess what? that takes away from your work-life balance and the flexibility that you were originally looking for by having to commute to a location that is just too far and eating up too much of your time. So think about that. Number nine, hey, you get a better offer. It happens. People are in recruitment processes. You get an offer from one employer, you're reviewing that, and as you're reviewing that, another offer comes in from another employer. Super great, great problem to have. And you're thinking, I, I need to commit to the first offer that came in. And actually, offer number two is a whole lot better. You got to go with offer number two. You need to be true to yourself and true to what you want, what you're looking for in, in, in a job. You've outlined everything that you think you need for a role and for you to be successful in terms of benefits and perks and commute and all the things we've just talked about. If that second offer comes in better than the first, that's the one you need to think about. Be true to you. Take the better offer. That's important. And the last one here, trust your gut. So important that you trust your gut in all of these processes here. If you've got that niggling feeling in your stomach where you're saying this just doesn't feel right, you're probably bang on that it's not the right role for you and you need to think about other opportunities that could come your way. So trust your gut. So that's it for this week's video. As always, there are links below to all my videos, my YouTube page. There are links below to my Interview Accelerator Platinum Academy, which gives you a step-by-step -step approach to preparing for any job interview. Highly, highly, highly recommend you enroll in that course. Please comment, like, subscribe, reach out to me at any time should you have questions about any part of your recruitment process. I'm here to support you. I hope you enjoyed that video. And like I always say, keep on rocking those interviews.